live. It's Dr. J here in the house with Evan Brand, our post-holiday show. Today's going to be just a quick podcast on how to recover from the holidays. Uh, in case you don't know, my whole family has COVID right now, so we are dealing with that and doing all kinds of natural immune supports, all the things that I talk about um, with my patients and talk about on the past to help improve and boost your immune system. So overall, feeling actually pretty good. Feeling pretty good. Family's actually doing pretty decent, so we are plowing through it, feeling great. Evan, how you doing, man? How are the holidays for you? Doing really well, and yeah, like I told you before we hit record, sorry to hear that, but also it's good to get it over with. We know that the natural immunity is the best immunity, far better than any other immunity that other people might like to convince you, and that is free and the best and most robust immunity. So it's amazing because paying attention to the media, you would think you should be like laying out right now, but here you are standing up at your standing desk, you're doing your normal thing and you're here on a podcast. So I love to just blow through the the narrative of the, the and, and blast through the fear. So beyond that, we're doing great over here, man. We're ready to dive into the holiday talk and this time of year is where you get like 50-50. Like half the people are like, okay, I'm going to go haywire. I'm going to eat whatever the hell I want, and I don't care. And then the other people are like, no way. I got to get dialed in. New Year's is coming, and for some reason, January 1st is this symbolic day where people feel like they want to get stuff together. I encourage you do it now. Don't wait until January to try to get yourself better. And so this idea of like cheat days or the holidays are here, so I'm going to go off the rails. I personally don't do that at all. I stay completely dialed in just because I know it's going to affect my brain. It's going to affect my gut. I don't want to have bad poops. I don't want to have bad sleep. I don't want to have skin outbreaks. So for me personally, I do the same thing I always do. If I want like a good treat and I want to feel like I'm getting something good, I might go for like a Siete cookie and it's like maybe one gram of sugar per cookie max, but I'm not just going to go eat a bunch of gluten and rolls and dairy and all that just because it's the holiday. So I personally think like this idea of like a cheat day or a cheat weekend, I just think it's crap because you and I've talked about this before, but like gluten antibodies, they can go up for months after eating gluten. So for me, I'm not just going to go do that and set off the immune system for potentially that long. No, I totally agree. So what we kind of did is we had um, the squash pie from True Food Kitchen. We bought one or two of those and we used that as kind of our dessert. So it's kind of a gluten-free, grain-free dessert option. So we had that. True Food Kitchen's great. Their desserts are amazing. Um, we also had some bacon-wrapped dates, which were awesome. I mean, you get the sweets and savory there. And then we also got some uh, poblano peppers. We put some cream cheese in it. Again, cream cheese is a little bit better than regular cheese, a little, little more lactose casein, um, lower in that at least, but a little bit of dairy. And we wrapped bacon around that too. So those were kind of our two hors d'oeuvres. I got the, the grill fired up, got some dry H rib eyes, just cut them really, really, really thin, put some two picks in them and just had a lot of finger food like that. And that was nice, really simple, really easy. Um, so we try to, you know, try to mitigate a lot of the destruction by choosing healthier, less inflammatory options, but also things that allow us to feel pretty satiated and pretty full and, and not have these blood, blood sugar swings that people get when they don't have enough protein or fat with their meal either. Yeah. If you want a crazy book, uh, we had a question come in on the live chat about detoxing from EMF, coming back to work with headaches. Uh, the, and this does pertain to the holidays too. I've been reading this uh, over the past weekend. It's a book called The Invisible Rainbow. It'll blow your mind. So if you want to read that book, it's all the scientific studies organized into one place about EMF exposure and how we've known since the 1800s when the telegram and the telegram wires first came out, people were having reactions to electromagnetic fields. And this certainly does affect you. So all the people that just got new uh, Apple AirPods and Apple Watches and all these uh, – cell towers that they keep on their wrist mm -hmm. and in their pocket, you know, I think it is smart to try to mitigate some of that. So going into the new year, there's some studies in that book too about EMF and blood sugar and how even people that were dialed in with their diet had elevations in fasting glucose simply by being exposed to radio frequencies. So uh, all you with your new tech toys that you got over the holidays, I would encourage you. I think seeing is believing. Not everyone is sensitive meaning they're not going to feel it, but at a biological level, there probably is something going on. So you could get an RF meter. There's one out of Canada called safe and sound. That's what I use. Mm -hmm. And I've, and I've measured, I, I stood face to face with a cell phone tower and that was about 10,000 microwatts per square meter. An Apple watch that a friend of ours had was 2 million microwatts per square meter. So people freak out about cell towers, but they've got I can't even do the math, 100x the radiation of a cell tower on their wrist all day. So on the EMF subject, I would not use or recommend those devices. Yeah, you know, what I do is I have a, a little tripod here, and I take my phone and I put it on a tripod, and I put it in front of me, 
and I'll just use Siri to kind of call my patients like that. So I'll put it away from me, which is nice. That way it's not on my person. And then I use um, just a little holster like this and I tuck my phone in like this. And a couple things you can do. So you can actually, I don't, I don't do this personally, but you can slit the side here and you can put some aluminum foil in and that will create a protective barrier with the phone going into your skin. So that's an option if you're really sensitive. I put it on my back right hip. So there's a lot of tissue there. There's a lot of bone, a lot of meat, a lot of glute muscle. Um, and the cell phone, it really has exponential. It's, it has a, a logarithmic intensity. So the first inch is the most intense and then it logarithmically drops off. Now, if you put the, your phone in your front pocket and it's right over your ovaries or uh, genitals, that's a problem. Right, because that's going to negatively that you're now you're like inside a couple inches of that tissue, and it's more sensitive tissue, and you don't have a lot of meat, i.e., thick uh, muscle like the glute, or a lot of bone in the way. Right, that tissue's kind of much more dense, and so ideally, you know, if you're a female, keep it in your back pocket. Don't put it over your breast tissue like that. That's bad. Don't put it in your front pocket, female or male. Keep it in your back pocket, or get a holster like I do. Put it right in the back part of your hip, and if you're more sensitive. Just make a little slit in and put some aluminum foil right up against it, and that'll give you a protective barrier. Yeah, a lot of times they sell like silver fabric too. Like I've got a I've got a shirt that's like a silver lined shirt. I've tested it. It literally, I mean, I had a cell phone right in front of me. It was like a million uh, microwatts per square meter. Throw in the meter, uh, just haywire, and then I put the shirt on, put the meter inside my shirt, and it was nothing. It was in the green. So a lot of these are lined with silver, these fabrics that are really cool. So I have had some sensitive clients in in the UK who we've got them some of that EMF protective clothing, and it has been helpful. And like you said, distance is your friend, so getting away from that is key. And then I do all my calls just on my computer, so I use Google Voice or I'll use Skype, and so I'm just on a hardware connection. So I'm using, I'm making zero. Uh, radioactive calls during the day, or like you and I know we do a lot of Zoom calls with our clients too. So Zoom, FaceTime, those are good options if you guys are having to do a lot of calls for work and mitigate your risk. Uh, you can do FaceTime on the computer, which is what I do. And it's a zero RF way of talking to people. And then we're hardwired. I'm hardwired. I know you go uh, like yep. wireless headset, but I go I go hardwired on everything. Yep. And I use I use this headset right here. So then the signal, the the receiver's here. Versus, so there's about an inch or so of tissue, uh, you know, fabric here. Because the, the, the phone really is, the first inch is the most. And where it's really concerning is when you have those eye, um, with the, the little pods in the ear, they go right deep in the ear and, and everything, the receiver is right in there. And so there's not a lot of tissue between you, your external auditory meatus and going into your brain. So something like this where it's, it's denser and it's actually more outside, or I use these on purpose because it's the, the signals in here and it's farther away from the head. But in general, um, Bluetooth is pretty weak though, in general, like Bluetooth only can travel like 30 or 40 feet. So I'm not really worried about that. I'm more worried about the 5G signals that are, that are traveling miles upon miles upon miles. A 30 foot signal isn't as big of a deal as one that can go miles and miles. So I think uh, if you can plug in, that's great. Or use a speakerphone, or if you have to talk on your phone, at least an inch or two away, because even Apple in their handbook, from what I understand, Fact check me or not, it says you want to hold your phone at least an inch away from their head, your head. So that's really important. Yeah, the, I think there was something in the fine print about that, about the emissions that come from it. Yep. Yeah. On, so, on the topic of more like, you know, back of uh, back back to like diet and food exposures and that kind of thing. Uh, I know you and I both sell professional enzymes that we use clinically with people. So I think that'd be a good strategy. If you do feel like for some reason you're off the rails or maybe you're not dialed back in yet, I do recommend like a broad spectrum enzyme just because you can start to break down dairy and gluten molecules using enzymes. So I'm not telling you to eat those things, but people got to live and people are not always going to be dialed in. So I think a good broad spectrum enzyme would be a smart thing to do. And then 100%. First, first thing of the year that, that I know you would recommend as well as me is I would get some labs done. I would look at your stool. I would look at your urine and start your year with some data so that you're not coming into the year blindly. You're coming into the year with some information about your mitochondria. How are they performing? What do your neurotransmitters look like? How's your dopamine and serotonin levels? What about your nutrients? How's your vitamin C? How's your B vitamins? What's your glutathione status? Do you have bacterial overgrowth? Do you have candida 
Do you have parasites? Do you have gut inflammation? Do you have gluten antibodies and your immune system is pissed off right now? I think it'd be a great strategy to start off the year with getting data. So if you need help clinically, you can reach out to us. We can run these labs on you. We send them to your home. You do an at-home stool, an at-home urine. We've done this literally thousands of times. You can get over 100 pieces of data just with one stool and one urine sample. So I'd highly recommend that. I think that's the best thing you can do. I think it's great to get all the foundational pieces in order, but when you really want to tease things apart and figure out what you're up against, you've got to test, not guess. And so if you go buy some random energy supplement or some random fat burning supplement or some random, you know, pre-workout formula, you don't really know what you're doing. 100%. 100%. So just kind of foundational things out of the gate. If you're through the holidays, try to mitigate the damage by choosing foods that are going to be less inflammatory, still give you the the feeling of your enjoying life, right? You're cheating a little bit, but it, it's mitigating the damage. Like Evan said, um, higher quality broad spectrum enzymes and acids, especially when you're eating those food, because a lot of foods that you're more intolerant to, you have a hard time breaking it down. And the lack of breakdown of that food can create more bloating and gas and constipation. So we'll put our recommended digestive supports below in the links below so you can see them. And we have different HCL enzymes and bile support products. And then we have different binders or detoxification support with glutathione or, or sulfur aminos uh, down below. Also, the immune support I'm using right now, just to give you kind of top five things I'm taking right now, of course, vitamin D, of course, N-acetylcysteine, really important, um, vitamin C, quercetin, And I would say reishi mushroom is an excellent thing. These are all things that I'm doing right now. Of course, a couple other things that I'm doing uh, preventatively are going to be sinus flushes, where I rotate between either a sinus flush with saline, uh, between iodine, silver, and hydrogen peroxide, all diluted. And I've been doing a little bit of nebulizing hydrogen peroxide. And I've been just taking the 5 ml saline blister packs and doing about three to four drops of hydrogen peroxide in there, which brings the amount to about 0.1%. And that works really good, just trying to keep um, kind of disinfecting that upper respiratory tract airway. That's where the virus tends to replicate and grow. And if we can knock that down with flushing or nebulizing, that prevents the viral load from going up, which that's what creates all the inflammation, right? So if we keep the viral load down, keep some good natural anti-inflammatories going, keep your immune system supported. Of course, sugar suppresses your immune system, get 12 hours of sleep a night. All these are foundational things out of the gates. Yeah. And your lungs, believe it or not, make hydrogen peroxide. So when people, uh, there's, you know, the internet and the supposed fact checkers, which in the court of law, now Facebook admitted that their fact checkers are simply opinions and they're not truly fact checkers. So that's important for people to know, but there's been some stuff online about hydrogen peroxide, telling people this is dangerous and all that. We make hydrogen peroxide in our bodies. Mm -hmm. So you're taking it at a diluted rate. I took it straight. I did just straight 3% just to see how it was. It burned a little bit in my nose, but other than that, it was fine. I did a whole podcast with Dr. Thomas Levy on this. He's a cardiologist who's been um, speaking. I think he did an, uh, a talk with Dr. Mercola about the topic. So if you want to listen to it, it's Thomas Levy. We talked all about the hydrogen peroxide nebulization and the IV vitamin C, which he's using for the RULO formation from people that are getting the injection. Uh, he's using IV vitamin C to help break up the blood. So really, really cool resource. Thomas Levy, he's a, he's a genius. Very cool. Yeah. So you want to bring it down to about 0.1% just so it's more gentle. If you go a little too much, you know, it'll just give you a little burning and such and make sure it's saline that you're using. I use a blister pack saline. Um, I'll put a link down for that as well. You want one that's specific for a nebulizer just so you don't irritate your respiratory tract. You want to make sure it's good, clean, sterile saline with, with just enough right amount of minerals to, to be in harmony with that, um, mucosal tissue. Well, anything else here, Evan, you want to highlight? We'll keep it really quick today. I'm happy you're doing good and you're doing all the right things. So definitely all the things that should be headline news, the things that are very safe and effective. And as Dr. Levy made the point to me, you're talking pennies or less than pennies per dose in some of the supplements and nutrients that you're taking. So just in in regards to cost, this is almost free the protocol that you're using. This is a very safe at home early treatment protocol. So I'm just really proud of you for doing that and spreading the word and hopefully we can help more people. Absolutely, Evan. Appreciate it. And guys listening, if you want to kind of get your 2022 off the right start and you have some health issues you want to dive into, feel free to head over to evanbrand.com. Reach out to Evan or myself, Dr. J at justinhealth.com. We are here to support your natural health, kind of root health needs. We're here for you. We'll put our recommended products and things that we chatted about in the description notes below. And if you guys enjoyed, share with friends and family and write us a review. We'll put all the links down below. You guys have a phenomenal holiday season and I hope your Christmas and holidays are great.
Yep. We'll see y'all soon. Take it easy. Stay strong. Take care. Keep your head up. Stay motivated. Don't give in to fear. Everything's going to be okay. Take care, y'all. Bye now. See ya.